As you watch this teaching, I would like to ask you to please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it. This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Welcome to the program. My name is Rick Renner, and my friend today, we're going to return to the subject of angels. But first, I want to say thank you. Thank you for letting me come into your space. I know you've got a lot of things to do in your life, and for you to make time for me really means something to me. And together we're going to rendezvous with the Holy Spirit and the Word of God in this program to see what angels are available to do for us. And this week, I have shared about three interactions I've personally had with angels in my life. Now, it's very rare for me to tell those kinds of stories from my personal life, but they're all recorded in the autobiography, which is called Unlikely, Our Faith-Filled Journey to the Ends of the Earth. And I want to encourage you to get this book, not just to read these stories about angels, but so you'll know that God wants to tap you on the shoulder, even if you feel you're unlikely, you're the one he's really looking to use because through you, it's for certain he'll get all the glory. Anyway, order your copy of Unlikely. And today is the last day on the program this week, which we're offering you the series called The Ministry of Angels. It is five parts. It comes in multiple formats. The subtitle says how to activate angels to help you right now. But how do you activate them if you don't know how and if you don't know what they do? And that's why I've been teaching this this week. I don't want to waste your time. I want to give you something that's going to make a difference in your life. I want you to know what angels are available to do for you, not for somebody else, not on the other side of the world. I'm talking about what angels will do for you. You need to know what their assignments are in taking care of you and how to activate their assistance. So please order this. Today is the last day with the study guide. And today is also the last day they were offering Joseph Z's tremendous book, which is called Servants of Fire. The back of the book says, Deploying God's Angelic Army, How to Activate and Cooperate with Angelic Forces. It's really the best book I've ever read on the subject of angels. And you ought to buy several because this is one you're going to want to share with somebody else. I'm sure of it. And we're also offering the book by Terry Law, which is called The Truth About Angels. And I really like this book because the subtitle says Angelic Encounters from a Biblical Perspective. Well, this program is about the Bible. And in fact, if you're a partner with this ministry, you know that we are trying to get the teaching of the Bible to the ends of the earth, and we don't teach anything that is not Bible-based. Our job is to bring teaching that can be trusted to people who are looking for answers and who are hungry for the Word of God. And if you're a partner, I want to say thank you for being a partner. But that's why it's so important to me that this book is about angelic encounters from a biblical perspective. But you can order all these things by going online or by giving us a call right now. And today is the last day we're offering these on the program. And please don't start your weekend without getting prayer if you need prayer. What's concerning you? What's on your heart? What's on your mind? What are you troubled about? My friends, you don't need to go to bed worried at night. You can cast your burden on the Lord. And if you're having trouble doing that by yourself, call us. We'll pray with you. We'll help you roll that burden over on the Lord so you can be worry free. That's God's best for your life. But if you'll call the number on the screen or if you'll send us an email, we'll really begin to pray with you. Would you please reach out to us? But reach for your Bible right now. You know, we always use the Bible in this program and we're believing for a revival of the Bible in the church. And today I'm wrapping up my series on angelic ministry. And today we're going to see that angels perform superhuman feats and angels worship. But we saw on Monday that angels meet physical and tangible needs. We saw on Tuesday that there really are times when angels provide supernatural guidance. We saw on Wednesday that angels angels provide protection and deliverance. We saw yesterday that angels make divine announcements and angels release divine judgment. And today, 
We're going to see that angels perform superhuman feats and angels worship. Maybe you've heard stories of people who experienced some kind of a strange encounter. For example, I just heard of someone that was in a car accident and a stranger appeared from nowhere and lifted the car off the ground so they could walk free. And when they turned around to thank the individual, he was gone. It looked like a person. But the person was suddenly gone. But that person had so much strength, they were able to lift the car so they could get out from under the car. Maybe you have a story of an angel that performed a superhuman feat in your life. I'd like to hear it. If you're watching by social media, write the story right there in social media. If you're watching on Facebook or if you're watching our program, send us an email. I would like to hear your angel testimonies. Would you please share them with me? I promise you I'll read them. It'll mean a lot to me to hear from you. And who knows, one day your story may anonymously show up in a book that I'll write about angels. But angels really perform superhuman feats. But we saw in Hebrews 1.14 that the Bible says, are they angels, not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. So if you're an heir of salvation, that means if you're born again, if Jesus is the Lord of your life, you qualify for angelic ministry. And Hebrews 1.14 says angels are ministering spirits. That word ministering is a form of a Greek word which describes sacred service. So angels have the most sacred service. And in fact, the same word was used to describe the priests in the Old Testament who were assigned with the task of meeting the various needs of worshipers who came to the temple. Well, when you put all that together, I mean, the angels have been assigned with a sacred task of meeting the various needs of worshipers or the heirs of salvation. In fact, this verse says they've been sent forth, the Greek word apostolo, which means they've been dispatched by the power of God himself to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. And that word ministers is the Greek word diakonia, which describes a highly trained servant, not a sloppy servant, but a highly trained servant, a servant who served the tables of very wealthy people in very elegant homes. And because they were serving such prestigious people, they had to be polished, cultured, professional in the way they served. So there was nothing sloppy about their service. And in fact, their job was to please their clients, to meet their needs and make them feel like royalty. Now take all of that into this word, which says that they've been sent forth to minister to you and to me, which means when the angels show up to serve us, they're not sloppy in what they do. They're highly trained, they're polished, they're cultured, they're professional. If you're seated at the table of salvation, if you're a child of God, they are there to serve you. You just have to have a seat at the table. And that happens by becoming a child of God. If you're a child of God, you're at the table. That means angels are there to minister to you. If you're not a child of God, call us right now. We'll pray with you. You'll become a child of God. And immediately in that moment, angels will be there to minister to you. That is the promise of Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14. I think that is amazing. What a wonderful thing to know. And you know, if you study the whole Bible, you can never find a single instance where an angel helped a wicked person. But you do find Examples of when they worked against wicked people. But the primary assignments of angels are to meet God's people's needs. That includes you. To strengthen the weary. If you're tired, that includes you. To give supernatural direction sometimes. That might include you. But by the way, in the Bible, supernatural direction of angels usually happens through dreams and visions. To provide direction in uh, protection and deliverance, that's for you. To carry out superhuman feats, I'm going to show you that today. To make special announcements and to release divine judgment and to worship, I'm also going to show you that today. But we've seen that Hebrews chapter 12 verse 22 says that in the church there is an innumerable company of angels. In other words, there's so many angels, it is not possible to count them all. They are innumerable. 
So it makes sense that from time to time you should have some kind of an interaction with an angel who shows up to meet your various needs. That's why they are dispatched. My friends, they're all around you. They're in this room right now. We saw that in the last program that they hover low to hear the teaching and the preaching of the Word of God. So I welcome all the angels which have come to hear the Word today. They're here. They're listening right now. But... If you study the Old Testament and the New Testament, you find multiple examples of where angels demonstrated superhuman power to perform superhuman feats. And one of the best examples is when the angel rolled away the stone, the massive stone that laid in front of Jesus' tomb. So let's read about it in Matthew chapter 28 and verse 2, which says, the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone. That word stone is the Greek word lithos, which is the word for a stone. But we know the stones which were placed in front of tombs were enormous. They were so enormous that usually they had to be rolled in a groove or it took many, many hands to move them. They were massive, massive stones. But this angel himself, by himself, rolled back the stone from the door and then sat on top of it. <laughs> That's amazing. The word sat is a Greek word which means to set down, the same kind of word that would be used to describe me sitting in this chair. And there are scholars who suggest that the angel's ability to sit down on top of this stone like I'm sitting in this chair really indicates the size of the angel. The angel was gigantic. For him to be able just to back up and just sit back on the top of this stone, he had to be enormous. Just today, as I was getting ready to teach this program, I was talking to a staff member who was telling me the story of someone they know who was having a surgical procedure, and they woke up during the middle of the operation. Well, of course, you're not supposed to do that. But when they woke up, they looked and they saw all around the table surgeons and medical assistants and standing behind the surgeons and the medical assistants, people of an enormous stature. They were angels. They were angels who were there in the room overseeing what was going on because Psalm 91 verse 11 says he gives his angels charge over us to keep us in all of our ways. We're told in Psalm 37 that the angel of the Lord camps around about those that fear him and delivers them from their destruction. That person saw angels that were there to camp around them, to watch over them and to keep them. And they were enormous. And here we find this angel was so enormous. Not only did it have the superhuman strength to move that stone by itself, but it sat on top of it as if it was just easily sitting in a chair. Then we find another example of an angel's superhuman strength in Revelation chapter 20, verses 1 to 3. So listen to this, or read the words on your screen, or look in the Bible yourself. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on that dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more. This probably is the archangel Michael, who we find is the archangel that is constantly resisting evil and dealing with the devil. But here we see the example of an unnamed angel who I believe probably is Michael seizing Satan. Do you know how powerful you'd have to be to seize Satan? This was a mighty angel, and it tells you that Satan is not the most powerful. This angel is more powerful than Satan. Binds him with a great chain, shuts him up in the bottomless pit, seals him with a seal so that he cannot escape. My friends, no human being could ever carry out such a feat. But this scripture clearly states a day is really coming when an angel, possibly the archangel Michael, will single-handedly accomplish this feat. It is scriptural proof of the great power that is possessed by heavenly angels. And again, I'd love to hear any angel story that you have to share with me today. Just write it there on social media or on YouTube or send me an email. I want to hear your angel testimonies. But angels really have superhuman power to carry out superhuman feats. But how do you activate their help? Again, we return to Psalm 103, verse 2. 
which says, Bless the Lord, ye his angels. It's talking to the angels that excel in strength. So according to Psalm 103, verse 2, they excel in strength. We know that's true. That do his commandments, which means they do the word of God. And it finishes by saying, hearkening unto the voice of his word. My friends, you've got to activate their service. If you don't speak the word of God, they'll stand there. They don't move until they're activated. When they hear the commandment of the word of God, that is when angels move. So if you're in a position where you need help, just declare Psalm 91 verse 11. He shall give his angels charge over me to keep me in all my ways. They shall bear me up in their hands, lest I dash my foot against a stone. And bam, immediately angels will be activated to demonstrate superhuman power to protect you. If you've already experienced that, please share it with me. But angels also worship. Now, some people say that angels sing, but you know what's interesting? There is not a verse in the entire Bible that says angels sing, not a verse. Now, I want to say clearly that I think angels do sing, but there's no evidence of it in the Bible. I have heard singing in worship which we believe really was the background singing of angels. One time here in Moscow, Denise was leading praise and worship. We were all there, and suddenly we heard voices that were transcendent beyond anything that we could do, and we knew these were angels that were joining us in worship. However, if you just look at the Bible, you cannot find one instance of angels who sing, but they do worship. And I'm going to show you how they worship. But somebody might say, wait, 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 wait. Job 38 verse 7 says angels sing. Does it really say that? Let's look at it. It says, when the morning stars, that's angels, sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Well, if you read this in the King James Version, it seems that the angels or the sons of God, that's who they were, sang Together, But when you look at the word sang in Hebrew, it means to cry out, to give a ringing noise, to scream loudly, or to shout. Does not have one thing to do with singing. It's with making a verbal declaration. And they shouted for joy. The word shouted is a Hebrew word, which means to raise a shout, to shout as a form of applause, to give a battle cry, to shout in triumph, or to make a joyful shout there's not one thing in that verse about singing. The King James translators just inappropriately translated the Hebrew word as the word sang. What it really means, they shouted or they said. Then you come to Hebrews, I'm sorry, Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 43. The New Living Translation says, Rejoice with him, you heavens, and let all of God's angels worship him. The word rejoice here is the same Hebrew word we just saw in Job chapter 38. It means to cry out, to give a ringing noise, to scream loudly. Again, the same word translated sang in Job 38 verse 7. Here, it describes the angels making a verbal declaration. Then you come to Isaiah 6 verses 1 to 3, which says, verse 1, In the year the king Uzziah died, I also saw the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Verse 2, Above it stood the seraphims, each one had six wings. With twain, he covered his face. And with twain, he covered his feet. And with twain, he did fly. Verse 3, and one cried unto another and said. Notice there's nothing about singing. One cried and one said, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The word cried in Hebrew means to cry out, to verbally proclaim, to proclaim loudly. The word said in Hebrew means to verbally declare, to verbally say, to verbally utter, to verbally speak. My friends, they're speaking, they're saying, they're declaring. Then you come to Hebrews chapter 1 verses 4 to 6, which says in verse 4, being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Verse 5. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. Verse 6. And again, when he bringeth the firstborn into the world, he saith, Let all the angels of God worship him. 
That word worship is the Greek word proskuneo. And the word proskuneo means to kiss the ground when falling flat on the ground before a superior. It means to fall down, to adore on one's knees, or to worship with all the necessary gestures of worship. Everything in this word worship has to do with physical gestures, nothing about singing. And then when you come to Revelation chapter 5, verses 11 and 12, verse 11 says, And I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders, and the numbers of them were 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands and thousands, verse 12, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. But notice nothing here about singing. They were saying, and the word saying in Greek, the word legantes means saying and saying and saying or continuously and repeatedly saying. No singing. They were making a verbal declaration with a loud voice. Loud voice in Greek means an overwhelming sound. And then you come to Revelation chapter 7, verses 11 to 12, which says, beginning in verse 11. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped God. Verse 12, saying, saying, amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto God forever and ever. Amen. But notice it says they fell before, which is the Greek word pipto, which means to fall or to collapse. It depicts one who falls so hard it appears he's fallen like a corpse. It's a downward fall from a high position. These powerful angels literally collapsed in the presence of God. And the verse says they worship, which again is the word proskuneo, which describes worshiping with physical gestures, saying. And the word saying again is the Greek word, which means saying and saying and saying or continuously and repeatedly saying. No mention of singing. They're making a verbal declaration. That's the way they worshiped. Now, somebody might say, well, wait, wait, wait. What about the angels that appeared to the shepherds in Luke chapter 2? Well, let's go there. Luke chapter 2, verses 13 to 14, beginning in verse 13, the Bible says, And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying. Because it says praising, most people assume that they were singing, but it doesn't say that. It says they were praising God and saying. What were they saying? Verse 14, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. The word praising, the Greek word aineo, which means, listen to this, to verbally laud, to verbally declare, to verbally express praise. The word saying describes what they were doing. And again, the Greek form that is used means saying and saying and saying continuously and repeatedly saying. So even though I personally believe that angels sing, and I think I've heard them sing, the Bible doesn't actually say that. You can't find that in the Bible. Just do yourself a little experiment and see if you can find it. Angels declare, they verbally declare. It really teaches us about the power of confession, speaking what we believe, declaring what we believe. The angels say and say and say they worship and they engage their mouth to verbally declare the greatness of God. That is the way that angels worship. That might be new for you. But hey, if you have an angel story, please write me. I'm waiting to hear it and I promise you that I will read it. But I'll be back in just a moment. And I'm going to pray for you. Did you know angels have been assigned to assist you and that they're available right now at this very moment to help you if you know how to activate their help? Rick Renner has experienced angelic help. And in this anointed, powerful five-part series, Rick wants to show you how angels can meet your physical needs and provide you with strength. How angels can provide supernatural protection and deliverance for you. How angels are often dispatched to deliver vital information and to make divine announcements. How angels are available to perform superhuman feats for you. This is what angels will do for you if you know how to activate their help. This new five-part series is available in digital or physical formats, starting at just $11. But wait, we're also offering the book Servants of Fire by Joseph Z and The Truth About Angels by Terry Law. Rick says these are possibly the two best books ever written on the subject of angels and what they are sent to do for believers who know how to activate their help. 
Servants of Fire is a fabulous power-packed book, and it can be yours for just $22. The book, The Truth About Angels, will equip you to know how to call on angelic help when it is needed, and it can be yours for just $20. Order the bundle of the series, The Ministry of Angels, How to Activate Angels to Help You Right Now, and the book, Servants of Fire by Joseph Z, and The Truth About Angels by Terry Law. Call the number on your screen or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. Well, I'm just wrapping up my teaching on angels. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'm waiting to hear your angel story. Please write to me on social media, on YouTube, or write to me at my email. I want to hear your angel testimony. But today is the last day that we're offering the series, which is called The Ministry of Angels, How to Activate Angels to Help You Right Now. And it comes with a study guide because I want you to have all the information in front of your eyes while you see and hear the program so you can really get this teaching down deep inside you. You need to know what angels are available to do and how to activate their ministry. And today is the last day which we're offering offering you two books, one by Joseph Z, which is called Servants of Fire. My friend, you will devour this book. And we're also offering you today for the last day on the program this week, the book by Terry Law, which is called The Truth About Angels. The subtitle says Angelic Encounters from a Biblical Perspective. You can order all these things by going online or just give us a call. Call the number on the screen right now. And by the way, when you call us, or when you email us, we want to know how to pray for you. Please tell us how to pray for you. And we will really pray for you. I promise you that. And we will keep your prayer need confidential. But put your hand on your heart right now. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus that you have sent forth ministering spirits, angels, to minister to the heirs of salvation. And since that's me and my friend, Lord, we pray for angels to assist us and to do their wonderful ministry for us. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you in the next program, but never forget Ecclesiastes 8.4. It says where the word of a king is, there's power. Denise and I are going to be coming to the United States and we're going to be ministering in some churches. And if you can join us, please try to come to one of the following meetings. On Sunday, February 18th, we'll be with Pastor Frederick Price Jr. and Lady Angel Price at the Crenshaw Christian Center Faith Dome in Los Angeles, California. And on Tuesday and Wednesday, February 27th and 28th, we'll be with Pastor Jerry Moore at the Word of Life Church in Miami, Florida. I cannot begin to tell you how happy Denise and I would be to see you in one of those meetings, but please go online for more detailed information. If you've never received Jesus as your Savior and Lord, now is the time for you to experience a new life Jesus has to give you. Pray this prayer with me right now. Lord, I repent of my sin and receive you as my Savior and Lord. Wash away my sin and make me completely new. I thank you that my sin is removed and Satan no longer has any right to lay claim on me. I faithfully promise that I will serve you as my Lord for the rest of my life. Amen. Renner Ministries is proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ through every available media to the uttermost parts of the earth. Discover the many ways you can help us make a difference in lives around the world with the Word of God. We invite you to partner with us in teaching, strengthening, and rescuing lives for the glory of God. Together, we can make a difference that will last throughout eternity. This program was made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. If that teaching helped you, would you please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it.